there is actually a production of a kids TV show that's an adaptation that was done really badly that butchered the characterization of everybody involved that had really bad writing. But it's not Percy Jackson. <laughs> Avatar went the opposite way, where it's yeah. like you have these big cinematic action scenes, but you're forgoing a lot of character development. Like they they made Suki into a boy crazy person. Mm -hmm. The one kind of emotional plot we get with um, with Katara is her crush on Jet. Um, you know, like it, they they did a lot to um, really like tone down all of the emotional stuff except for Iroh and Zuko. I will I will still say that's the one thing I feel like they did right. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like we get, yeah, cool. We get to see the Air Nation get destroyed, but like at what cost, you know? We could have had more character development with Monk Gyatso even. One of the things in the announcement thing that I saw on Twitter about them doing season two is in the announcement they said that they were going to use the volume stage less mm -hmm. and so the volume stage is something that they used on percy jackson that's how they did all of the scenes that made it look like they were in all of these locations that they were never actually in and i okay. thought that it was like a kind of fascinating little way to compare the two productions that for avatar they're like saying oh we're going to use like the technology less this time to like try to fix what people don't like about it. And it's like, it's not the technology itself that is the problem because nobody had that critique about Percy Jackson. They used it in a way that like cut down the narrative and like the character development of the story. And that was actually the problem. Guys, it's not actually the, the volume stage is not actually the problem. It's your writing. The thing I always, that I tended to say about Percy Jackson with that is like, I don't want to see little children get beaten first yeah. off, like for all too long. Um, that's not fun. But even, even like beyond that, the, the fight scenes that happen in Percy Jackson are there to like facilitate like plot development or character development or both. Mm -hmm. And so that's all they're there for. And that's all they should be there for. This isn't a Marvel movie for yeah. people who will Marvel at like the different costumes and things like that. They're like, these kids are walking, like they save the world wearing a t-shirt and jeans. They, yeah. And like regular tennis shoes that they don't have like costumes or anything like that. They don't have fancy, um, even any fancy like weapons or anything. Mm -hmm. Percy has his, every kid basically has like one thing. And it's like the same thing that they've had forever. And that's the end of that. And so it doesn't have to be fancy like that, but it's there to like move the characters or the plot along. Comparing it and Atla is just kind of a fascinating thing because it's the same general like fan group, but one was handled so much better than the other one. And it director who did episodes five, six, and eight of of Percy Jackson, she did an episode at least at least one of Avatar. And when I listened to an interview with her, <laughs> like Percy Jackson was the best production I've ever been in the history of my life. Mm -hmm. and she's like before the she's like before the season started, all of the directors all got together and we all like made sure that we all had like a cohesive like vision for the show because they didn't want it to be so weird that you could tell that different directors directed different episodes. Everyone wanted to be on the same page. Everyone wanted to agree on everything. And and I was like, wow, <laughs> like, yeah, I've honestly never heard of another production that actually works that hard to make everything such like a cohesive process. But it also, but when she said that, I was like, oh, what was Avatar like? <laughs> when she was like, this is the best production I've ever read in the history of my life. And then she said she was coming off doing Avatar episodes. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> those poor kids, because they deserve to have such a nice time too. I mean, if we want to talk about reducing female characters, like taking away God. their trap. <laughs> Katara, my God! Like, uh, yes, you do. They do. They want to die. Like, <laughs> like that's all I can say about what they did to her. It's and not even just her. Like, obviously, to her is the most stark because everybody loves her. But it's it. What it was also a thing of like they took out all the things that people would think that might be annoying about her, but is huge parts of her characterization. 
And but they did that from what I saw with like Aang too. And they did that with Sokka by taking out him being like a little sexist weirdo at for the first few episodes. But it's like that storyline is about him being traumatized by his mom dying. Yeah. And so now you take away him being traumatized by his mom dying. So now there's nothing about him. So that made him actually more sexist by taking out the things they thought were sexist because now like they put in all these other storylines of him with Suki and stuff where he was actually acting like the show was like more sexist because the storyline with Suki was just about them being like a couple and had none of the like substance that the characters had in the actual show. And it then added in like the weird scenes with like Katara and what's his face? Yeah. Yeah, that make that are just like what? <laughs> and like the and it just took out so much Art never really learns how to water bend. So <laughs> they get their hands on a scroll immediately from the grandmother. <laughs> and then by the time they get to Master Paku, it's basically like, oh, this girl already knows how to fight. Like, you guys are good, so go ahead, and you, she can teach you. <laughs> like, and it's like, no. The way that I imagine, like, comparing the two is, like, imagine when, instead of, like, the voiceover of, like, Percy Jackson, right? Imagine it starting with, like, him at the, at the museum. And then, like, Chiron, but, you know, Mr. Brunner walks up to him and just starts reciting the open narration like word by word or like or like percy like walks up to when he's meeting grover for the first time and just starts saying that as like lines we'd be like what the hell is going on nobody talks like this yeah. in actual real life and then especially if then like 10 minutes later they had like one of the furies start like reciting the lines again <laughs> and it was just that would be so very weird. There is actually a production of a kid's TV show that's an adaptation that was done really badly that butchered the characterization of everybody involved that had really bad writing. But it's not Percy Jackson. <laughs> Defending Zuko, there's one scene that takes away from what Zuko was all about, which is he actually does fight his dad. Like, it wasn't him backing away, or, well, in, in the show, it was, I'm not going to fight you because, like, this was never about me and you. I thought I was going to fight that other dude. But in this show, his dad, like, basically coaxes him into, well, like, you were man enough to speak up, so, like, fight. Um, and, yeah, it just, it doesn't suit Zuko because the Zuko that we know is so afraid of his dad that he wouldn't have stood up to him that way. Mm-mm. Like, even when he finally does stand up to him, it's when he literally doesn't have powers. Like, that's the only reason he does. Yeah, because he's terrifying. He's an abusive dad. Of course he feels like that about him. And, like, if he's actually in character, I mean. I think I saw a TikTok or something. That was like, I'm up to episode four of Avatar, and Zuko hasn't mentioned his honor once. And I was like, oh, God. And, like, he doesn't need to say the words, like, my honor, but that is such a huge part of his characterization that he feels like he feels this need to like prove his worthiness to his very abusive dad after the way that he just tossed him aside like that and it's what sets up his entire storyline of mm -hmm. throughout the entire rest of the show of him realizing that he doesn't you know the thing that i wish athena would realize that you're never going to make your abusive dad happy and to just do what you want to do instead of doing things to make them happy and you'll probably be a happier nicer person he actually figures that out though but it's like if you don't introduce that in the first season then what the hell why is he going to change his mind later on then um because that's like the reason why he does and so unless you can come up like make up an entire storyline um i don't know and that is possible like to do that or just like randomly have him start talking about that suddenly in season two everyone would just go along with it because everyone wanted him to talk about it in season one anyway <laughs> but it's but it is like a strange thing that they took out such huge parts I feel like this isn't even avatar um like i feel like people made it who liked the show but they also changed so much about it that it yeah. took away so much of who these characters are that i feel like i'm not even watching the characters that i enjoy I mean, that's how like Percy Jackson fans feel when we watch them when people watch the movies. Like that's not Percy. That's not that's not Annabeth or Grover or anyone else for that matter. That's like a weird mutant version of those characters that exist that everyone tries to ignore. 
Like, why, why is, why is Tyson a stoner? The question that will never be answered. 